Lisa. Hi, I'm Tara, and we're with LaGrange County Nights Shine. We are so excited that you guys have signed up to be buddies, and um, we just really couldn't do this without you. We're sorry about our cancellations two times now for buddy training, but we're going to get this done. We um, feel it's very important. It is a part of the Tim Tebow Foundation. Um, they do encourage it and recommend it. And we also feel it's important for the safety of our guests and for you guys to understand what's going on. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, um, and we'll have a, a short um, quiz at the end for you. So pay attention. Thanks for being flexible with us and plan, hopefully plan C will work out. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I want to tell you a little bit about Night to Shine if you, if you aren't familiar. Um, it is through the Tim Tebow Foundation and it's a prom for people with special needs. Um, this is our church's third year doing it and Tim Tebow's fifth year doing it. We are so excited. We have 167 guests signed up this year. Our goal from year one was 150 and um, we have just grown and we're so excited. We cannot wait for this night. Um, it's held every Friday right before Valentine's Day weekend. Otherwise, we would certainly not pick February, but, but this is what Tim Tebow does and it's held worldwide on one night. So that's a little bit about what Night to Shine's about. It is an amazing night for those of you that have never been part of it. Um, it is the highlight of the year for many of our guests. Um, and for those of you that are serving your first time, I can tell you um, my first year serving, I thought, I'm going to do registration and I'll be out of there. I'll only do an hour or so because it's a, my son's birthday weekend as well. And um, next thing I know, I'm closing up and, and cleaning up and out of there. It is just an awesome night and it's just a great opportunity to serve. And you will get more in your return for your investment in the um, night to shine than, um, than what you thought. So. Yes. Um, a little bit of stats, um, Night to Shine 2018 numbers. This is not, like Elisa said, it's a worldwide event. It is not just here in LaGrange County. Um, last year, there was 537 host churches, 49 different states were represented, 16 different countries, and over 90,000 honored guests. Um, so it is a one incredible night, and we are so fortunate to be just a little glimpse of something so bigger than what we could ever dream or imagine. Um, I told you a little bit about our church and how we've been involved, but we have had a Bible study um, for nine years now called Friendship Bible Study for people with special needs. and so. When this, um, when this hurt, when I heard about this and it came up, I just thought, what an awesome thing for us to do. So we're excited to um, bring this to you, and uh, the our friends that come to Friendship Bible Study um, really love it, and we have a lot of them there also. So, all right, uh, information for our buddy team. Um, one of the most important things that we could tell you is to never leave your honored guest during the evening. We will pair you up as you come in. You will be paired one-on-one -on -one with your guest and you will spend the entire evening with them. So that could mean that you will dance the entire night or you will walk down the red carpet five times, um, maybe ride in a limo five times, but it's just, it's just for you to be there with them and to have them have the best night of their life. Um, so you need to familiarize, familiarize yourself with any special considerations or allergies that your guests may have. And Tara's gonna talk to you a little bit about the name tags and how that will work in a little bit. Um, we will pair you when you come in. And so we wanna make sure, um, I know some of you have been with the same guests for the last two years, and we think that is awesome. What a great way for you guys to bond. And I know that they look forward to it as much as you do. We will try to honor your request um, for that, but also keep in mind there are 167 guests coming in that night along with 167 buddies. So it will be a little crazy in the beginning. There will be three of us pairing you. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you do see your guest and you're like, oh, I just want to be with them, um, just try to come up and grab one of us and we will try to try to honor that and do the best that we can. Elisa, do you want to tell them if I'm new to Night to Shine, I'm new to this kind of thing, and I don't feel very comfortable, how will you go about um, pairing, pairing me up? Yeah, um, that's a great question. When you come in, um, we have had some uh, buddies that have told us that they know sign language, which that's awesome because we do have, I think, one or two guests that do need an interpreter. So that's awesome. We will try to pair you with that. Um, we may have uh, a buddy that has a bad back problem, so they've asked not to be paired with a wheelchair. Um, and so we've tried to keep track of all that, but you can also remind us. Um, there are some, some guests that are nonverbal, so if that's something that you're uncomfortable with, 
we definitely have other guests that we can pair you with and we've tried to you know keep track of people that are more comfortable with that and we will pair you know them accordingly so we want to ha you to have a great experience um because the more that you're having fun the the more our guests are having fun so. right right um, on this slide, information for the buddy team. Um, it is very important that you ask several times through the evening if your guest needs to use the restroom. They get so excited out there dancing and um, you know they just don't think about it, but you need to remind them. And when you do take them to the restroom, we want you to be aware that we have bathroom attendants, uh, male and female, and they're out there to kind of help and guide you, but you still need to go with your guest into the restroom. You do not have to help them restroom, but you need to remind them when they're done, did you wash your hands? Let's make sure you wash your hands. You always need to stay with them. And we always want you to be um, never alone with your guest. It should always be at least three of you. Um, there's going to be a lot of people in there, so I really doubt you're going to have a chance to go anywhere with your guest by yourself. But just make sure that you go into the restroom with them um, and stand there, and then there'll be a bathroom attendant too. Or if there's other people in there, we just want to make sure. And that's for your safety and theirs. If they would have a seizure and you're, you know, they're in there by themselves and you're just standing out in the hallway, nobody's going to know. So that's very important. Um, Another thing, if, if you want to stay in touch with your guest after the event, that's awesome. But you may ask their parent or care caregiver about that and just be aware that, um, I know me personally, I get a lot of Facebook's waves and um, sometimes we don't always have as much free time as they do. So keep that in mind. We do think it's neat that you stay in touch, but just be aware that we're, we aren't always readily available like they are. So. Uh -huh. One other thing to, to mention is we, with a, over 500 guests, or 500 people attending the event, or around 500 people um, with guests, buddies, and all of our volunteers, um, restrooms might be a little tight. So we have added a couple porta potties this year um, because of the limited bathroom space. Um, but we're asking that mostly males will use those porta potties just because it's a little bit easier. Um, but again, we want to make sure that there's three people, the porta potties we understand maybe standing outside the door, um, but that there is at least three people. Um, so oh. their guests, you and the bathroom attendant that are around if needed. So, mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna talk about food tips and best practices. Um, we want you to be very aware of special diets. Um, this is huge. We have a lot of people that are diabetic. Um, they may be gluten free. Some of them can't have food at all. And Tara's gonna talk to you a little bit about that and the name tags in a little bit, but I just want to make sure that you are very aware of that. Some of them cannot have sugar and we will have sugar free things there. So, um, And your food people, um, we have a whole food service team that um, is going to be helping serve the food. And Wilma Miller, our food, food bleh, I'm gonna start that over again. Yeah. <laughs> Take two. Wilma Miller, our um, food service team leader, um, is aware of how to locate those dietary restrictions um, and to look for them too. So she can help um, make sure that we are giving the correct food to the right person. Yes. And um, when you are connected in the beginning and paired up, you will meet with their um, parent or caretaker. And so they can kind of explain some of that stuff to you. Sometimes I think we think it's really cool, like, oh my gosh, my... Um, guest wants another whole plate of food and you think that's kind of cool but sometimes it's not because they're not supposed to have that much food so we really need to be aware of that and and kind of ask those questions when you're paired up um, also for medications which tara will also talk about on their name tags but we want you to be aware that you are not responsible for giving medications to your guests that night they may need medications while they're there between six and nine but that is not your responsibility it is not the emt's responsibility it is the staff or parent or caretaker and um, they have let us know that and so they know they'll be up in the respite room probably and they can get their medications to them so you do not need to do that that and when you're paired up with your um, guests the parent is or guardian is supposed to be there so maybe that's the time that they'll say we're hoping um, that they'll say I need to meet you around seven o'clock for medication um, if you know that you're supposed to meet them for medication or you think you might have to or somebody might need it um, there is a safety team um, that has and uh, EMT and a police officer. Um, they all will have black shirts on, except for our EMTs will be dressed in their and the uni uniforms. The, 
Um, the police officer will be in uniform too. Um, so locate them or find one of us with a um, golden sparkle lanyard. We are your core committee members um, and we can help you get paired up with what the parent or the caregiver. So um, if you have any questions, go to them about medical or to us. Uh, parents and caretakers, we want to make sure that we honor um, these parents and caretakers. You know, this is a little bit of a, a rest for them and, um, you know, you're giving three hours of your time for them to go up and enjoy our respite room or maybe go out and have dinner um, without their child and having to worry about taking care of them and their special needs. And so we really want to honor them and you are honoring them by being a buddy and taking care of their child or, you know, their loved one and so we really appreciate that and we just want to make sure that we welcome them and make them feel loved also so there is a respite room for them um, that they can go they can have their own food their quiet time um, hopefully we can pan for them in some other ways too um, so there is that room um, we want to steer clear of our guests invading that room because we want them to be um, able to have that retreat um, however if you do need to locate them just let us know again through security or through one of our um, core committee members. Talk a little bit about wheelchair and limited mobility tips and um, for those that are in wheelchairs if you're having a conversation with them um, just make sure that you're not looking down over them you know bend down beside them so you can see each other eye to eye and you can talk to them a little bit easier you know make sure you're watching when you're in crowded hallways that you've got room to get them through and everything so um, just kind of wanted you to be aware of that. Um, let me talk a little bit about how we get you the information that you need to know. Um, so first of all, I have been in charge of registration. So every time you sign up, any communication is either through Elisa or myself. So um, we appreciate you so much. But we also need to make sure that we have enough buddies there. So it's very important for us to know that you have arrived. So we're asking you to arrive, if you could, um, as early as 515. We know that with work and stuff, that may be difficult for some of you. So no later than 545, please. Our salon will have a salon that will be open at five o'clock with appointments so there will be guests already there so as soon as you guys can get there we would appreciate you being there but you will need to check in you will get your name tag um, and then you will go go to a waiting area holding area until we can pair you up with your guests so when you get paired up with your buddy um, you will look at their name tag and there will be three symbols you will want to look at on the front side, there is a red cross um, that is, alerts medical concerns. Um, if there is a fork and spoon, it's a dietary concern. And if there is a yellow caution um, triangle, then it is a allergy concern. Um, so then you ask, where do I find this information? Well, if you look at the front of the name tag and you see those alerts, then you'll tr flip the name tag over and in the back side, we'll, will list what those that alert means. So for example, um, my alert showed that there was a fork and spoon alert and a medical concern, and my example shows that I have um, to be careful of my intake of sugar and that uh, there's a diabetic or a seizure disorder. Um, hopefully then, if there's more information with um, that, that the caregiver then can explain that to you upon handoff. Um, there's also the emergency contact number. If for some reason there is an emergency, um, we know how to reach them quickly. Um, then that little um, box in the lower right hand corner of the name tag is their checkout information. Um, that is what we will use when we go to exit. Um, at, at the end of the night, this is a new system for those of you that have never or that have done this before. Um, it may take a little bit more time and I ask that you bear with us, but one of the feedback that we got was that we needed to make sure um, our exit strategy was a little bit safer for our guests. And of course, safety is our utmost um, concern. So we are going to have you come back to the area that you meet with your guests at eight around, well, just after crowning. So at crowning, you need to be on the dance floor at 815. And then after that, you will need to pick up your picture if you haven't done so already, get your coats, and then hang out in the area where you are matched up with. Guardians will then have a number that will match the back of your buddy's name tag. So at that time when you are gathering there and you've gotten all your stuff, you can take off their name tag, stay with them until we've matched them up with the proper guardian. Um, 
So how will you remember all this stuff? Well, name tags are your friend. So <laughs> on the back of your name tag, your name tag that you get when you register at 515 or no later than 545, um, will have things to remember. So after you've been paired up with your buddy, um, it's time to start the evening. Um, we, there's a couple things that you want to do first, and this is all on the back of your name tag. Um, the professional pictures are a must. Um, we need to get every one of our guests their um, night to shine picture to commemorate the evening. So those need to be done first so we can get them printed and back into their hands by the end of the night. Um, the corsages and boutonnieres, we want them to enjoy those all evening so maybe pick those up and then go get your picture done. Um, then you get the evening to enjoy um, from limo rides like um, Elisa said the salon and shoe shine will be open at the beginning as well um, karaoke game room photo booth um, there's obviously food that's for you as well as your um, guest and the sensory room um, is if your guest is being a little overstimulated um, it can go be a calming place so they can go and there's staff that will be available in that room to help manage those situations as well um, but also on the back of your name tag is that reminder time. 8.15 it is very important that we gather back into the dance room floor to get a special message from our um, leader, I guess Tim Tebow, um, to, that kind of puts us on. And then each one of our guests will be crowned kings and queens of the night. So after that crowning event is when we will proceed back again to the back of the room, but making sure that you pick up your picture, pick up their gift bags and their coats, and then being there waiting for our guardians to pick them up. And a couple things to touch on that. Um, when you do come to register and you park your cars, since there are so many people, for those of you that were there last year, we will park over at Yoder's department store parking lot and we will have a bus that will shuttle you over to the Farmstead Expo barn. So it's all on the same side of the road, but when you pull in, you'll just go off to the right towards Yoder's and I think East Chicago Pizza's over there and we'll fill up those parking lots with our volunteers first so that we can save our guest parking lot um, for the end. And a little different on the crowning this year for those of you that were there last year, we're trying to find ways to make it more special. So we will still have, we're excited to have Miss Indiana, Miss Indiana Outstanding Teen, uh, Mrs. Indiana and several other title holders will be doing our crowning again, but we're going to crown just two at a time. So we will have our security, um, they will be in black, uh, they say night to shine and security on the back, and they will just let two people go up at a time. So just, you know, I know your guest is excited, but make sure that you kind of keep them in a line and just kind of listen. Um, and we think this will make better pictures for everyone. It'll make it a little more special for each guest if it's just two at a time. So. Um, every year we try to look for ways to improve and make things better and so we're hoping this is just another one of those ways so can I go back a little bit um, back to the the buddy name tags or the guest name tags um, those alerts if you turn that name tag over and you are not sure what that alert means like I know some of them um, may have said NPO well for those that are medical you we know what that means um, but that means it basically means nothing by mouth there may be things on there you don't understand hopefully the guardian will clear it up but again if you have any concerns you're not sure what that means just come and ask one of us with a lanyard um, a sparkling lanyard or the, your medical safety team. On the slide, um, general tips for communicating. Um, I just, just a couple important things. Sometimes, you know, I've been around people with disabilities for a very long time and sometimes it's hard to understand them. And, and that's okay if you don't understand them, but don't pretend like you do understand them because they could be saying something and you're saying yes and you really should not be saying yes. So if you have trouble understanding what they're saying, you know, just ask them, could you repeat that one more time? And if you still don't understand, come and get one of us and see if we can interpret it. And if we can't, then we will find somebody that can. So that's really, really important. Um, obviously, you know, don't alter your voice and speak to them in a childish manner. I, I think people understand that. You know, talk to them just like you would anybody else. And even if they're nonverbal, it doesn't mean that they can't understand what you're saying. So still talk to them and have a conversation. You know, do you want to go get some? Um, supper do you want to go out to the dance floor you know still communicate with them even though they can't communicate back with you um, just address them like you would any other person so um, this is very important 
talking about preventing and handling uncomfortable situations. If you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, don't be afraid to ask. Um, some of sometimes they get a little overstimulated, like like Tara had talked about, and we do have a sensory room for that. And you know, they could just start screaming, they could yell, they could cover up their ears. Um, so you know, if you see that happening, try to grab one of us, grab the security people so they can find us, and you know, we'll help you with that situation. Just remember though to stay calm. <clears throat> Excuse me, don't get excited. Um, and again, never go off alone with your guest. I guess one other thing on that slide too is a lot of times we do try to pair um, guys with guys and girls with girls. <laughs> I've had several of my Bible study friends say, I want a girl this time to walk down the red carpet. And, you know, we do, sometimes we don't have that option, but a lot of the times we do this because of restroom um, situations and because a lot of them, um, I guess we need to just encourage them that they are just our friends. They're not our boyfriends or girlfriends um, because they may want to be. So we're just there to have a good time. But, but that is why sometimes we just try to pair guys with guys and girls with girls. It just makes it easier. But it doesn't always work that way. But just encourage we're all friends here. Um, that's very important. So. Um. Also, in case of emergency, um, make sure they're clearly marked at the Farmstead Expo Barn, but there, make sure you know where all the exits are if there would be an, an emergency. Um, like we said before, there's safety and security there um, and lice or uniformed EMTs. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and see them. Um, you can also see anybody with our lanyard like I've said again I feel like that should be a test question <laughs> um, and um, they're also each area has a team leader so the team leader will have that on their name tag of what they are leading they have a little bit more information too than just our general volunteers so you can also seek them if you can't find one of us so um, and again like Elisa said earlier we're not responsible for any medication to be delivered or anything like that but we do want to be aware if there is a medical concern or a safety concern um, speaking of that too, on, upon registration for every one of our guests, we have to get a photo release that we're allowed to take their picture and, and po potentially use it for um, publications or things like that that get submitted to the Tim Tebow Foundation. Um, so with that, if for some reason your guest does not want their photo taken um, or their carryover does not want it, there will be a little gold ribbon that will be attached to their name tag. In the past, there's only been maybe one or two that have opted for this option, but please be aware of that. Um, our photographers and media should be aware of it as well. However, sometimes you just get snapping pictures and you kind of forget um, where you're at. So if you could be a little protective of your guests and make sure that you're pointing out that their photo is not to be taken, that would be appreciative. Um, so we are so thankful that you're willing to be part of our Night to Shine um, event. Remember, this is about our guests and that we want to make their night to shine. There is a lot of work that goes into this, a lot, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but we could not thank our sponsors enough. So we truly get all of our funding to run this event through donors, through grants, through foundations um, that are willing to help partner with us um, to put this on every year. So to help um, with that for upcoming years, we have started to sell merchandise that you can purchase to help us fund Night to Shine. Um, so these wonderful t-shirts that we're sporting <laughs> um, are available for um, purchase as well as some awesome mugs um, that are really really good mugs so um, if you are interested in that at all please let us know we will have them available at the church um, and also available at the event so the t-shirts cost $20, 20 and 25 for the bigger sizes and the mugs as well 20 and 25 for the for the smaller mug it's 20 and 25 for the larger mug so we just want to thank you again for signing up to be a buddy. Um, we truly could not do it without you. You guys have picked the best spot to be in for the evening. Um, you're going to be right where all the action is. And so we hope we've answered some of your questions. Hopefully we have put some of your um, worries at ease. And we'll have a short little um, question and answer thing here at the end for you to make sure you were paying attention. But we really, really appreciate you. And we can't wait to see you on the 8th. So see you. Bye.
Volunteers, what's up guys? I'm Tim Tebow and I just want to take this time to say thank you so much for being part of A Night to Shine. Night to Shine is my favorite night of the year. It's been my favorite night of the year for the last four years and this is going to be our fifth anniversary of Night to Shine. And we've been so blown away of how God has just continued to grow and enhance Night to Shine. The first year we had 44 locations and this year we're going to have over 600 locations, over 200,000 volunteers, over 100,000 kings and queens, all 50 states and over 20 countries. And we are just so humbled and we are thankful. But why we can do it is because of you. It's because of you willing to give of your time, your energy, your resources, and your money to say yes, you want to be involved because you believe in the mission of Night to Shine. And that mission is to love kids, it's to love people with special needs, it's to bring the church together, and ultimately it's to change the world through the eyes of people with special needs. And we believe that we're doing that with every single Night to Shine. So thank you so much for volunteering. Thank you for being a part of this mission of, of Night to Shine and what it's doing around the world. Truly, you are part of something that is changing lives and I just want to take this time to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. This is truly going to be a night that so many people will never forget. God bless you.